Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, this is the second webinar in the series of Signal in the Noise series. Um, we had our last one last week where we kind of gave a an overview of Viome. You heard from various executives in our company, including our CEO, Naveen Jain. Um, you know, today is all about food recommendations. Um, our next one is going to be on January 6th after the holidays, where we're going to talk more about supplements. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that we really appreciate you as customers and uh, for all your business. Um, we do want to let you know that we do have a, a thank you that we're offering each of you. And I'll just say it now so that you have it. If you use keyword signal, S-I-G-N-A-L, on any purchase between now and January 6th, we're offering all participants site-wide savings above up to 70%. For those of you that uh, did just the gut intelligence test before and are interested in the health intelligence test, which includes blood and all those great scores, you know, this is a good time to do it. You'll never get lower prices. Um, and uh, we just appreciate you very much. Also, I would love to ask that you follow us on social media. We're active on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We also have a private group on Facebook for customers, which with the most beautiful community. And, um, with that said, I think I'm going to start this webinar. Looks like we're at just about 11.05 Pacific time. And uh, I'm going to start off by introducing our chief technical officer once again, Guru Banavar. Last uh, week, he gave you a little bit of, uh, of an insight into how we determine scores and, and some, some really interesting information about the, you know, the future of IOM. Guru, what I'd love for you to do today, if you don't mind, is spend about, you know, 10 or 12 minutes or so. Give us a recap for those that, um, you know, it, it was, it's been a long week. You know, we've all been working hard. Tell us a little bit about what we went over last week. Give us a bit of insight into kind of the core of our food recommendations, which is the glycemic response prediction. And then I really would love for you to kind of work it in into the food placement. How did we come up with our food list? What are all the different foods? What does it mean? Guru, over to you, my friend. Thank you so much, Maury. And, and hi, everybody. It's great to be back. Um, for those of you who were on our first webinar installment, you will remember our CEO saying that there are two major concepts that we are basing the science of Viome on. One is the notion of gene expression, not just your DNA, DNA that's your genes, but it's your gene expression, which is the RNA. That gene expression changes as you go through different parts of your life. And as you eat different foods, as you travel, as you take medications, you're gonna get different kinds of gene expression. That's the first concept. The second concept is that we, the human biology is not by itself. It's not acting by itself. It is, interacting with a microbiome, which is essentially the environment in which we live. There's microbes all around us. There's microbes inside us, which is our gut microbiome, for example, and there's microbes everywhere in our body. That interaction between our human host biology and the microbiology is a super important part of how we stay healthy or we get sick. With those two concepts in mind, I wanna just, again, recap for you the basic idea of the technologies that we use in VIO. Again, there are two technologies we use. One is metatranscriptomics, which is just a fancy way of saying lab sequencing technology for these RNA molecules, and AI, artificial intelligence, which is the way in which we process the data that comes out of the lab. This diagram here on this page tells you a little bit about how we process your samples. So to recap again, there is a, I think there's a, there, there are sort of two important processes to keep in mind. There is sort of the inside out process, which is how do we understand your biology by looking at your samples? And then there's the outside in process, which is knowing the components and the ingredients within food. How do we match that to your biology so that you can live the most healthy uh, life possible? And you can also eliminate some of the chronic issues in your biology so that you can live a long and healthy life. So on the inside out side of that equation, I wanna show you this picture where you see here three people, the green, blue, and the pink people. 
who all have provided us their stool and their blood samples. And some of you I know have the gut intelligence test, which is only the stool samples. Some of you have the health intelligence test, which have the stool and the blood samples. But either case, we apply our metatranscriptomics technology, that's the RNA extraction and sequencing, to, to isolate the information in your samples. And that is the signal in the noise to understand what is going on in your gut. And those are the little squigglies you see there. And we, we essentially map those RNA molecules to the functions of your genes. Some of them have a metabolic function, some of them have an inflammation function and so on and so forth. Those are all the KO1, KO2 columns. And then we compute scores. We talked about scores in the last webinar. If you want, you may want to you know, go back and review that. But the basic idea is that we look at pathways that are active in your biology. And then we use those pathways to deliver recommendations by taking all of the scores into account and mapping that to the best possible medical and nutritional science that's available in a huge amount of literature that we curate and that we use in our recommendation engine. So this here is the inside out analysis we do. On the next slide, we do the outside in analysis, which is, you know, we have a food database. We have a massive food database. Okay, in this food database, we capture the essential elements of every type of food. We have all kinds of meats, we have all kinds of vegetables and fruits, and we understand their macronutrients to begin with. And in the next slide, I also talk about the micronutrients, but first let me explain this previous slide, which is this slide here. Yes, thank you. So on this slide, what I'm showing here is that every one of these foods has a different impact on your metabolism. Now, why do I talk about metabolism? Because metabolism is the very fundamental process that essentially digests and integrates your food within your biology. And the basic idea of metabolism is this notion of sugar response. How much sugar is in your blood? How is it being absorbed by your cells and so on? Also known as glycemic response. This glycemic response is very much dependent on your biology, which includes your microbiome. So what we've done is for every food, by looking at the ingredients of the food, the macronutrients and the micronutrients, we understand and we are able to predict what impact that food is going to have on your body after having looked at your microbiome. In the picture at the very top, I show in fact an example of two people that we found in our clinical study on this exact topic. We recruited a total of a thousand people in these clinical studies, and we've seen very different glucose responses for the same food in two, in two different or many different individuals. For example, here you have a participant P1 who has a spike in their sugar on the left-hand side. That's the green curve on the left-hand side when they eat a banana. A different person, P2, when they eat a banana, they don't get a spike. They have a flat glucose response. That's the green curve on the right-hand side. And oh, by the way, for bread, it's the opposite. Person P1 does not have a spike in their sugar. Person P2 has a spike in their sugar. So this type of response to sugar from the different food components is something that we have studied across a large population. And we've incorporated the elements of the microbiome that make this sugar response happen within your biology. And we've captured that inside a machine learned glycemic response prediction model that is the foundation of our recommendation system. So for example, a person comes in, we determine whether that person is gonna have a spike for banana. And if, if no spike, then we put it in their enjoy foods. That's at the top of this, um, uh, flow at the bottom here. And if they do have a spike, we put the banana in their minimized food. So that's the first step in our Already recommendation. We've got about two minutes, my friend. The next slide then. Um, we then take that classification of our entire set of foods that has been put into either the enjoy bucket or the minimized bucket. And then we look at the activity of your microbiome pathways. For example, the butyrate pathway, which is an inflammatory or an anti-inflammatory pathway, is very important to determine whether 
we should take the foods from an enjoy bucket and either upgrade it to a superfood or downgrade it to an avoid food. Same thing with an oxalate elimination pathway. So I show here an exa example for oxalate elimination. Let's say for, for example, that we are using spinach from our food database. We, let's say, figure out that glycemic response is very low for you as an individual. So we put it in the enjoy food bucket. And then we look at your oxalate elimination pathway. The oxalate elimination pathway, let's say is high, which is a great thing. That means that you can consume spinach and you can eliminate the oxalates. In that case, we can upgrade the spinach into a superfood. Now, on the other hand, if you don't have a very active oxalate elimination pathway, that's, that means our, the pathway activity is low, then you may not be able to metabolize and eliminate the oxalate that you get from your spinach. In which case, even though the glycemic response model said that it was an enjoy food, we may downgrade it to an avoid food. So this is a process that we do for every single one of the foods. We have literally hundreds of foods in our food database and we understand the ingredients and the components of those foods. We go through this process, we put every food for every individual in one of those four buckets and that's what you see in your app. This is a high level framing of our food recommendation system. My colleagues here, Janelle, Grant and Hillary will talk a lot more about it. So with that introduction, let me pass it on to Janelle. Guru, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. And you're right on time. And I wish I could see the hundreds and hundreds of people's faces here, all understanding this for the first time. So thank you so much, my friend. And uh, the next person I'm introdu going to introduce is Janelle Connell, who is a senior translational science nutritionist here at Viome. Janelle, what I'd love to hear from you is really give us an introduction to personalized nutrition, you know, the importance of food on our microbiome, you know, do I have to avoid my foods forever or does the microbiome change? You know, what's, what are Viome's goals when it comes to nutrition? How do we determine the recommendations, scores and your recommendations and how they tie in? I know those are a lot of the questions I had when I started and a lot of the questions I still get from consumers. So please take it away, Janelle. Thank you so much, Guru. All right. Thanks, Guru. Thanks, uh, Maury. Um, well, first, I'm excited to be here today. It's nice to be able to connect with our Viome family and of course, I always love talking about food, so i um, happy to be here with you all. Uh, Guru gave us that nice overview of how we make our recommendations, and um, Maury, I'll try to uh, talk a little bit first about maybe why it matters and why food matters to our health. Uh, you've probably all heard the expression at some point that you know we are what we eat. Uh, at Viome, we take that a little bit further and we say, you know, we are what our microbes eat. Uh, Naveen even touched upon this in our webinar last week um, that our microbes outnumber our human cells about 150 to one. So what they're being fed matters. Um, we're learning more and more, especially over the past decade about the role of the microbiome in our health and how it governs so many more aspects than just our digestion. So we're seeing the associations with um, conditions like asthma, um, trouble losing weight, uh, skin issues, mental health, arthritis. I think we could go on and on really with that list. Uh, we've, we've put up a few studies here on the slide that you can see. And these are just a few examples that demonstrate that importance of food in the link between your microbiome and your health. Uh, at Viome, we see food as the foundation of health. This is where your recommendations start. We start with food. Uh, you know, we get so much information all the time, inundated with health tips, um, new diets that come out, so many things that claim to be what you should be taking, what you should be eating. Um, they sh it should be for everyone, right? We've all heard that. At Viome, we challenge that idea. Um, we challenge the idea that there's one perfect diet. What we know to be true is that there's a perfect uh, nutrition plan for you, right? It's personalized. And that can even evolve over time. Your nutrition plan today may be different than your one six months from now. And uh, that's why we encourage retesting, right? Our goal is to change the environment within the gut, 
to improve that gene expression and um, hopefully be able to uh, use the diet to alter some of that. I think uh, many of us in the past have kind of lived in this world of, of fad diets. They uh, tend to address maybe one like goal or one symptom. Uh, weight loss is often the key there. Um, while weight loss is great, it's often really good for our health. It doesn't necessarily equal better health. It doesn't mean you're healthy on a cellular level. Um, and most importantly, they work for some people, but they don't work for everyone. So our mission at Viome is really different from that. We're, we're not just addressing a short-term goal. Our mission is to prevent and reverse chronic disease, cancer, and aging. And I know Naveen really, again, he, he uh, encouraged us on that last week, but ultimately in my mind, uh, the goal is to establish wellness before disease happens. And this kind of mission requires a nutrition plan that looks at so much more than just macronutrients. So here at Viome, we tap into, you know, the latest in food science to drive our uh, recommendations. So not only are we constantly consuming that information and incorporating the latest research, but we're doing that research on our own also. Um, we have peer-reviewed papers. Um, a couple of them show up on this slide here that you can see. Um, we're also um, you know, doing more of that, more and more as it comes. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But the take home message that I hope you guys all feel passionate about as well is that our recommendations are based on science. Um, we're, we're attacking this mission by using data-driven recommendations because um, each person, person's data is unique, right? Each, each person's data is different. And so that means you need different recommendations. It needs to be personalized to you. Uh, you've probably heard us say before, I think we tend to say this often that, you know, a bacteria is not necessarily good for you or bad for you. Uh, rather, it's the function that is performing that can be either helpful or harmful to your health. And uh, the really positive news is that foods can modulate those functions. Um, that, in my mind, gives us a lot of power, right? You have the power to modulate those functions of what the bacteria are doing. If we take, um, let's take, for example, you know, we know that in, in the gut, there are microbes that can produce butyrate and butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. Um, it's good for us. We want, we want more of it. Um, it tends to, you know, feed those cells that, that line our gut. Um, but this function can be dependent on what you're eating. So microbes can either you know, produce butyrate or um, not, depending on what they're being fed. And that means that you can modulate if a bacterium is good for your health or bad for it, depending on what you're eating. Um, that's really the excitement of personalized nutrition. It's just a field that I love. Um, we can look at what's going on within your unique biology, and then we can use food as a tool to help either improve or maintain those functions. Um, let's flip over to the next slide. Looks like we maybe went one too far. One more back. There we go. All right, so I think we're all here today to learn about how Viome determines your food recommendations. And ultimately there are three categories. Um, Guru already touched upon this glycemic response model, which lays really a, a foundation of uh, metabolically looking at how foods can impact you. Then of course we have our scores. We talked about those last week, but we will talk in more detail about how scores drive recommendations. Um, and then also your questionnaire. While your questionnaire is not necessarily the main driver of your food recommendations, it does help us just tailor um, to make your recommendations even more personalized. So, you know, we get information from you like your age or maybe um, self-reported health conditions that you have. Uh, these are important. Let's say, for example, that, you, um, that you're currently pregnant. We have pregnant women who take the test. Uh, if you're pregnant, the recommendation engine will be mindful of how many foods high in mercury, right? Fish high in mercury that are being recommended. 
Um, similarly, we have many of you who uh, self-report food allergies. This is super important. If you have been tested and you have a known food allergy, we do not want to be recommending that food to you. Um, so the questionnaire just kind of helps put on that final layer of personalization. Um, but let's, uh, let's dive in and let's talk a little bit more about um, our scores and how they're driving your recommendations. Um, you got let's about go to the next. Know. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. All right. So in my mind, this is uh, one of the most important keys. Scores are obviously a, a main player in your food recommendations. It comes directly from your tests. Um, and while many other kind of diet programs look at food from a macronutrient perspective, we at Viome, and I think as well as many of you, understand that food is so much more than just its macronutrients. So we have almonds here on the screen. Um, Almonds contain many nutrients. There's just a few listed here, but anything from, you know, uh, specific vitamins like vitamin K and vitamin D, uh, minerals like magnesium, polyphenols, fatty acids uh, could really go on and on. Um, so all within this little nut, there are nutrients that can all have an impact on your health. Um, so here at Viome, we look at those uh, pathways within your test results that impact your scores. And we have a team, our systems biology team, who actually identifies nutrients or substrates that can either support or maybe disrupt those biological pathways. Our clinical nutrition team then takes that information and we turn it into real food recommendations, right? So what foods contain those nutrients that we're trying to target? Um, in this process, we look at over 125 different nutrients within foods. Um, and within those nutrients, even further, we're looking at multiple functions. Um, to give you a little taste of that, you know, we have, again, quercetins here on this screen. Um, you may have heard of it before. It's pretty commonly found in allergy supplements, and it's also found in some of our foods. Um, it's known to block the release of histamine. Um, so that's one function, right? But it's also an antioxidant that helps protect against free radicals. And it also has some anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so when we take all of the functions of quercetin and we look at the scores and the pathways, um, we can see that it may help to calm an overactive immune system and ultimately you know, help improve an immune system activation score that's high. So this is, you know, kind of taking a simplified example here with just the almond and the quercetin, but really the beauty of what Viome's doing is that we're using AI, um, an AI driven recommendation engine, and it's able to consider all of your scores and multiple nutrients within hundreds of foods like Guru was talking about in our database, all at the same time. So um, this decision to either recommend a specific food or not, depends on you know, the desired nutrient that we're trying to target to help your scores, um, the amount of that nutrient in the food, and then all of your scores um, and the role that nutrient can play within either supporting or hindering those, those uh, other scores as well. Um, Amazing, all to, you know. Yeah. So we're, I think we're gonna, if you're, are you good? I'm, yeah, I'm good. I, I think this is kind of the first level of, of that. Oh yeah, we got, we got more to come and um, you know, it's, it's really something else, you know, even you brought up almonds, for example, that was an avoid for me six months ago. Now it's a superfood um, really amazing. And thanks so much for that great overview on how the scores impact the recommendations. Hey, Dr. Antoine, Mr. Grant, Dr. Grant, you know what? I would love it if you could, you know, <laughs> I, I, give us a peek behind that little wizard's curtain over there. And, and I would love some of the nitty gritty details that we consider before making the food recommendations for our customers, please. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Those nitty gritty, nitty gritty details are important, right? That's what we're all about. Um, so Janelle mentioned the scores. Uh, Guru briefly mentioned uh, that little box you might have seen to the right of his slide, one of his slides, the microbiome pathway analysis. 
uh, we just want to kind of give you some of the, 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 the details, a little peek into uh, what we're actually evaluating, what we're assessing, um, really because it's a, they help drive our food recommendations, really give us that precision and that personalization. And they're a great example of our technology, right? And uh, they what make Biome's recommendations uh, so powerful. So we have a few examples today. We're going to talk about oxalate, elagic acid, and uh, diazine metabolism. Uh, up first, oxalate metabolism. So what's oxalate? They're these little organic compounds um, found in plants. They help the plants uh, regulate their, uh, their mineral metabolism, right? When we ingest the plants, and these oxalates get released into our gut. Um, because they have such a high affinity for minerals, they can really interfere with our absorption of things like calcium and magnesium. Uh, and then if they're absorbed themselves, once they're in circulation, they can continue to bind to minerals and can actually increase your risk for kidney stones, right? Especially if you're susceptible. The, the good news is certain microbes in your gut can reduce the, the, the pool, the availability of these oxalates to bind uh, our minerals and interfere with our metabolism. So really these microbes will use the oxalates as foods, kind of as building blocks uh, for energy. Um, and by doing so, decrease the amount of oxalate um, and, and that interference. So the oxalate metabolism pathway score assesses this activity. It looks for both the, the microbial ataxa, which is basically just a little population of microbes doing this work, um, and then the actual amount of work they're doing in uh, reducing oxalate. Uh, if you have a suboptimal score, meaning those microbes either aren't there or the activity is low, then you're going to have a higher pool of oxalate, uh, and we want to avoid that. So we will move high oxalate foods, things uh, leafy greens, spinach, rhubarb, uh, 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 almonds, uh, what else, cocoa, uh, wheat bran. Uh, we'll move these foods to your minimized list to minimize the impact um, that this oxalate is having on uh, your digestion and, and, and your, uh, your nutrient absorption, right? Um, if, if they're fine, if your oxalate pathway scores are good to go, we're going to keep those foods and maybe in your joy list. Maybe they even get bumped up to superfoods. Um, but really, this is how we're personalizing those, those recommendations. Uh, up next, elagic acid. So elagic acid is a tannin. It's found in things like strawberries, walnuts, pomegranates. Uh, it's really a good polyphenol by itself, but uh, the microbiome can actually take that elagic acid and convert it into this super nutrient, this, these urolithins, specifically urolithin A. Urolithin A is a, it's a kind of a, like I said, a super uh, nutrient. It's a super anti-inflammatory. It uh, supports our immune system, and it's really good for our mitochondria, helping them uh, with their energy production, making them more efficient, and helping them with their numbers, right? So, Remember uh, in our last webinar, we we're talking about mitochondria a lot and the more, the healthier and the happier our mitochondria, then the healthier and the happier the, the human is, right? So um, we, we measure this activity, we assess, we say, hey, are there microbes there that can do this work, convert that elagic acid into urolithin A? Um, is that activity efficient? Uh, if so, then again, we wanna move those foods to your enjoy list. So you're getting the maximum benefit of that urolithin A from those foods. Um, and uh, what's interesting is only about one in three people have this ability um, based off the microbiome. And so if we can't get that uh, nutrition through the foods, if we can't get that urolithin A, then, then we look to say, hey, can we actually supplement? So stay tuned. This is one of the ingredients we're trying to get included in our precision supplements. So if you don't have that ability to convert elagic acid into urolithin A, now we can give it to you orally um, so you get the same benefits. Uh, up next, our final example is going to be diazine. Uh, Diazine is an isoflavone, and it's found in soybeans. Um, and another example of uh, a nutrient that can be converted to a supernutrient, uh, diazine can be converted to a, this thing called equal by the microbiome. Uh, equal, it's, it's antioxidant. It's really uh, protective against estrogen-related disorders, so things like osteoporosis, heart disease, uh, estrogen-dependent cancers, uh, uh, menopause symptoms in the ladies. Um, uh, but it really, again, depends on your ability of the microbiome to do that work, that do that conversion uh, to make that equal available. All animals actually have this ability, um, but only about a third to half of humans do. Um, and so we assess for that activity. Look again, look for that taxa, look at those pathways. 
um, if you if you show the ability to convert uh, to uh, produce that equal, then we're going to move those soy based foods like soybeans, tofu, tempeh, miso, uh, even soy milk. We're going to again move those to your enjoy list so you get the, the maximum benefit. Um, these are just a few examples, but um, it's just another example of how how Viome's challenging that idea, this common knowledge that all healthy foods are good for all people, um, and really that the microbiome can't be taken for, grant, uh, for granted and has a direct impact on uh, our nutrition and our health. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, great. All right, so here we have um, one of the questions that uh, came in um, previously, which uh, Grant, if you're good with it, I would love for you to read. Uh, give me just a sec here so I can see it because I'm blocked at this point. Um, You're reading, I'm reading, we're no, reading. I'll go ahead and read it for you. So okay, why does Viome recommend not eating meat for someone that has suboptimal TMA production pathway score and whose recommendations also suggest a need for amino acids? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Uh, the, the short answer is so we can reduce inflammation and cardiovascular risk. Um, while still providing those amino acids, either through plant-based proteins or, or supplementation. Uh, but let's back up for a second. What is TMA? What, is it, what, is it, what does it do? Um, TMA, it's a metabolite. It's produced by the microbiome uh, from carnitine and choline. There's two nutrients that are found uh, high levels inside uh, animal proteins. Um, TMA itself isn't such a bad deal, but that TMA can uh, cross over. It goes to our liver and our liver actually converts it to um, uh, TMAO, which is, uh, is really bad juju, right? It's a really inflammatory molecule. It's really been implicated in increasing cardiovascular risk. It does this through upregulating inflammatory pathways and affecting cholesterol metabolism uh, and actually promotes uh, foam cell uh, formation. Foam cells are these uh, immune cells gone rogue that really are kind of like the little carpenters that are help building these plaques. Um, uh, really, uh, not good. And, and actually the increased TMA levels are associated with a greater risk of major adverse cardiovascular events. No one wants that. So uh, the score, the TMA production pathway score assesses for the activity. Is it, are the microbes there? Are they converting uh, and producing this TMA? Uh, if so, then we want to reduce that activity. Um, uh, so what you will see, you'll see a non-optimal score in the app that says, um, hey, you're really producing a lot of TMA. We'll take that information and really we're going to move uh, a lot of your animal protein. So things like beef, eggs, shrimp, we're going to move those to your minimize list. However, you're not going to see all animal proteins move to minimize, right? Because um, they're still important. You still get good things, uh, vitamin B12, CoQ10, uh, all those amino acids we're talking about. Um, so really we're looking at foods that are the highest in choline and carnitine. Those are the ones we're going to move um, so you can continue to get that nutrition. Um, and then if need be, we can also uh, supplement with those amino acids, especially maybe you're a vegetarian, you're vegan. Uh, maybe we can get those amino acids through supplementation. Uh, same thing with the vitamin B12, right? Um, uh, but what's also interesting, the side note, we're moving those foods over, but we'll also assign the voids to certain ingredients that, that uh, contribute to the same activity. So uh, L-carnitine that you'll see for mitochondrial support in a lot of supplementation, uh, all forms of choline, we're going to put a voids on those ingredients so you don't get them. We're not contributing to this inflammatory pathway uh, and really helping to reduce that cardiovascular risk. Wow. Grant, that's, that's truly some amazing science. Um, Janelle, you know what? I need somebody to give us a view of how this all comes together. Can you help us with that, please? All right, sure. Let's look at it. Um, all right, we've got our next slide here. So this is maybe just a snapshot to see. So you guys can see how these foods can move around from category to category. Um, so let's say you got your test results back and you have an energy production pathway score that's suboptimal. In this case, we might say something like alpha lipoic acid would be good for you. It might support this pathway. Um, it's a cofactor for mitochondrial energy production, right? So it's good. Um, alpha lipoic acid is found in spinach, uh, but like Guru showed at the beginning, spinach also contains oxalates. So it's then gonna be dependent on your oxalate production pathways as well. Um, for, for you, let's say you didn't have a lot of uh, oxalate metabolizers in your sample, then that food is gonna stay unminimized. We're gonna, it's gonna be more beneficial to you to minimize that. 
and um, focus on other foods that have alpha lipoic acid in it, like maybe uh, tomatoes, or maybe we would use it in a supplement. Um, next on the list is grapes. Um, grapes contain resveratrol, again, maybe helpful for that energy production. And um, when we hypothetically look at your glycemic response, we predicted a low response to that one. So that's great. It can stay as a superfood. Um, we've got sauerkraut on here, one of our fermented foods. We tend to really love those um, here at Viome. And uh, sauerkraut has like all the, the natural probiotics in it. It can help with butyrate production. Um, but let's say you self-reported a histamine intolerance. Well, sauerkraut is really high in histamines. So then we'd suggest to minimize that food so you're not having it so frequently. Um, similarly, we've got an example here with broccoli. You can see that while broccoli contains that alpha lipoic acid, it also contains um, a lot of sulfur compounds, good for some people, but for those who have a high sulfide gas production pathway score, um, may not be optimal. We want to avoid that. Uh, I, I saw one question kind of come through on the webinar and um, someone said, you know, what's really the difference between enjoy and superfood? And I think that's a, a great question to address that, um, you know, when we have that baseline of your predicted glycemic response that Guru introduced, um, we can see and say, okay, this food is, is not likely to you know, have a high glycemic response for you. So we're going to allow that to be on enjoy. What's going to take it up to superfood is then looking at your pathway activities, right? Does that food have something in it that's going to help improve your scores? Um, and that's, that's really the difference there. And I'd encourage everyone to, you know, look at your food list and click on each one individually, and it will list some of the reasons why it's promoted to superfood or maybe why it's been taken down to avoid. Um, so, you know, this is just kind of like a little mini example. Obviously, we're just using a few scores in this example. Um, in the big picture, your test results is taking in many, many scores. I think over 30 scores contribute to your food recommendations. Um, so it just gives you a little example of how foods can really move between each category. One of my favorite things to do here at Viome is really to step back and look at our Viome population overall. And it's really interesting to see the diversity in all of your recommendations when we do that. So while something like grapes is definitely can be a superfood for some people, it's got that resveratrol. Um, when all inputs are taken into account, all scores and pathways, it's only a superfood for about 9% of our biome population. Um, and then on the other hand, something like beets, I think um, many of you are familiar, it's pretty high in oxalates, but it has a lot of other beneficial compounds like nitrates and folate, and it's got like those dark pigments in it, which are really good for inflammation. Um, so again, when all things are taken into consideration, it's only recommended to avoid for about 2% of our biome population. So in the end, we get these really unique um, kind of distributions of our food, and that's because it's all driven by you and your unique data. Next slide. All right. It looks like we've got another customer question here for you, Janelle. Are you up to it? All right, let's take All this right. one. Yeah. I have a suboptimal protein fermentation score. And I've actually seen this question before in myself. But I have protein foods in my superfood list, like fish and chicken and lamb. Can I eat these foods? I don't get it. Yeah, this is a good question because um, it sounds like we're contradicting ourselves, right? We're saying you've got protein fermentation, but we also want you to eat protein. Um, our GI test can show for signs of protein fermentation by your microbiome. We see this a lot in people who eat a high protein diet, like a uh, paleo diet. Um, and that's because our small intestine can absorb about 20 grams of protein over a two hour period. Uh, so if you're not digesting your proteins well, or maybe you're just eating too much protein at one sitting, um, that protein can sit in the colon where the microbes can convert it into 
you know, byproducts that are, are not ideal. Things like ammonia or putrescine, um, those can ultimately hurt our gut lining. Having said all that, our body still needs protein. Um, we need those amino acids, whether it comes from plant sources or animal sources. And there's, you know, other nutrients in those foods that are good too. Like, you know, salmon has omega-3 fatty acids in it. So if you have this score as suboptimal, if you've got protein fermentation as suboptimal, it's really important to follow your volume food serving sizes so that you're managing your portions of protein foods. Um, you're making sure to not have large protein meals. So spread that protein out throughout the day. And then you may also be recommended um, enzymes to support that protein digestion. And you can see that in your precision supplement recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Really appreciate that. And that is really fantastic information. So I guess, you know, how should people really implement these recommendations in their food, you know, in, in their daily lives? And, you know, are there some that are good for everyone and some that are not good for everyone? Um, you know, Hillary, I would love it if you could bring us up to date on that and, and tell us a little bit about your thoughts on, on those topics, please. Thank you so much, Janelle. Betcha. Thanks, Maury. You got it. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so we've given you all this great insight on how we make your food list, your superfoods, your enjoy, minimize, and avoid. But how do you know how many of each you should eat per day? So another way that Viome is taking the guesswork out of your diet is by determining all of this for you. There's no more calculating your calories anymore. Just take your Viome test. When you get your results, this appears in your app for you. So you can find this in your app by navigating to the nutrition tab and then filtering by the food group. So you can see in, on the right, in this example, it's filtered by vegetables. So this user here should be eating six superfood and enjoy vegetables per day and to minimize. So what this means is when this user or when you're building your meal, you should be focusing on the superfoods first, incorporating as many of those as you can and then finishing it out with enjoy foods and then some minimize. Um, I think a great way to incorporate all of your food groups, as many of your superfoods as you can into your diet is by cooking stir fries and soups or eating salads, right? You have a lot of different vegetables, you can put grains and proteins in there and they're also really yummy. Uh, We're gonna and be then, selling superfood soup next, right? Right, I think it's a great idea, <laughs> biome soup. And, and, and just for those people, I mean, obviously, you know, the app is the easiest way to, to take our recommendations on the go. And that's what's pictured here. But this is the same if you're just looking through a desktop application as well as Viome.com, correct? Correct. This okay. is all uh, on the web and on your app. And this is on the go. You can take it with you when you're at a restaurant and you need to decide what to order or you open it up at the grocery store. It's right there for you to reference. Okay, next slide, please. Or actually go back one slide. I forgot to mention the, the serving sizes. So um, how much of each vegetable constitutes a serving size is also in your app. If you navigate to your food list, click on the food, you'll see a serving size here for chard as one cup. And then there's also a short description of why chard is good for you. Or if it's an avoid food, it'll describe that as well. Okay, now next slide. Oh, I think you skipped one. There we go. Okay, so Viome recommendations are all highly personalized, but there are still some recommendations that are applicable to everyone. Um, this is all for, for you in your app. Again, navigate to the nutrition tab and the top bar, it says the guide to following your recommendations. If you click on that, you'll see all sorts of tips like um, how to grocery shop and how to cook your food. Um, if you haven't referenced that, I highly recommend checking it out. For now, I'll just highlight a few things that I think are really important. Uh, first, eat whole foods. If you look at your Viome food list, you'll notice that you don't see combination foods. There's no cookies or granola bars, right? It's all whole foods. Uh, these are foods that are coming from the ground or they're coming straight from 
animals, right? So whole foods, eat them organic when it counts. Ideally, we would be eating organic foods all the time, uh, but depending on where you live or your food budget, this might not be an option. So you can save some money by referencing the EWG Dirty Dozen list. You can Google it or in this guide to recommendations in your app, there's a link. Uh, this list tells you the 12 produce items that are most commonly contaminated with pesticides. So splurge on those ones and you can save some money by buying conventional for the rest of your produce. And then when it comes to your meats or fish, go for antibiotic free meats and fish, right? This, these antibiotics will, will still make it into your gut when you eat them and those will decrease your microbial diversity. And we know that a diverse microbiome is a healthy microbiome. Um, go for a variety in the foods that you eat. The different colors of foods have different nutrients in them. So eating variety will help get you uh, plenty of nutrients and also different foods have different microbes on them. So variety will help you increase your AMD score, your active microbial diversity score. Uh, exercise regularly, right? We all know that exercising burns calories. It speeds up your metabolism and, and helps you lose weight. I mentioned last week in the webinar that exercising signals to your cells to make more mitochondria, right? To produce more energy. But did you also know that exercising is helpful to your microbiome? So exercising recently, uh, research has shown that it promotes the growth of bacteria that produce butyrate. Right? So we mentioned butyrate earlier, but butyrate can promote the repair of the gut lining and it can reduce inflammation. So make sure you're getting your reps in. That'll help your microbiome scores too. Uh, stay hydrated. Uh, drinking water is going to help flush out toxins in your body and improve your, your stress scores, your cellular stress, your microbiome induced stress. Uh, but drinking plenty of water also it has a beneficial effect on your gut. It uh, helps balance the good bacteria. So staying hydrated is a really simple way to promote a healthy gut. Um, next, stop eating when you're 80% full. Uh, I think a great way to make sure you're, you're only eating about 80% full is to measure out your food beforehand. So check your, your serving sizes of your biome foods, measure them out. Um, if you have the whole bag in front of you, it's likely that you'll eat more than a serving size. And maybe even try drinking a glass of water before you eat. That'll knock off two from this list at once. And lastly, uh, from the cooking tips, soak your grains, flour, nuts, seeds, and legumes before you eat them. So there's some more details and instructions on how to do that. But the reason for this is that these foods are all covered with a protective coating. It's called phytic acid. So soaking these helps degrade the phytic acid so that you can um, absorb your nutrients better. So eating foods that are high in phytic acid often cause some bloating and some discomfort in the gut. So this uh, soaking them beforehand will improve the absorption. And uh, I noticed a question here about almonds. Uh, that's the, this phytic acid is the reason why you may have almonds as an avoid, but you may be able to minimize or enjoy almond milk. That's because almond milk, when it's made, you soak the almonds and that degrades the, the phytic acid. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so if you're buying packaged foods, there are some food additives you should look out for. Um, these foods are all going to have negative effects, um, not only to your microbiome, but to your cellular health, your metabolism. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go over all of these, but I'll just point out some interesting ones. You got about two minutes, Hillary. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Sodium sulfites, I think, are interesting. They've been shown to inhibit the growth of good gut bacteria. If you are a pre and probiotic subscriber, you might recognize some of these strains from your stick packs, the Lactobacillus casei, Lactobacillus plantarum, Rhamnosus, and also Streptococcus thermophilus. You can find sodium sulfites in wine, beer, dried fruits, cured meats. And I just found this out recently, sriracha. Uh, so 
make sure you're looking out for these food additives when you're buying any packaged foods. Next slide, please. Uh, and then again, foods everyone should avoid. Um, I'll just point out a few interesting ones. Oatmeal and yogurt, if they're flavored, they're generally pretty processed and contain a lot of sugar. And then also uh, aspartame, saccharin, these uh, artificial sweeteners. They may sound healthy because they're not causing that glycemic spike that eating sugar would give you. But these artificial sweeteners have recently been shown by researchers in the UK to cause what would be beneficial bacteria, your E. coli and Enterococcus faecalis to become pathogenic or disease causing. So Hillary, as far as like, let's say an oatmeal or a yogurt, if it's on your enjoy or your superfood list, you're obviously trying, we're not doing it if it's processed or flavored, but if you've got, you know, if you've got raw sugar or honey or agave or something, well, not agave, that's, that's on your avoid list here, but but something like that, I mean, that is something that, you know, can be used to sweeten from a whole food perspective, correct? Right, yeah, agave nectar, beet sugar, not so much. They're still going to cause a glycemic spike. Um, but I think fruit's a good way to, to sweeten it. Um, maybe get your unflavored yogurt, mix it with your oatmeal. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, you've got all of these... Uh, general recommendations. Uh, well, I'll leave you off with one last recommendation is that if you're going through a major change into your lifestyle, you need support. Uh, and I think we have a really great Facebook community. So if you're not already on our private Facebook page, I encourage you to join. There's some great success stories. There's coaches that will answer any questions you have. So check it out, engage with the community and get some support. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hillary. And um, before we move to the next section, which is going to be some uh, questions, I just want to remind everybody, um, we've had a lot of people join since I said this in the beginning. If you use a keyword signal, uh, S-I-G-N-A-L, on any purchases between now and January 6th, we're offering 70% site-wide. So for anybody that wants to think about some stocking stuffers or, you know, get an HI kit if you've done your GI kit, that's a good place. The Facebook community is amazing. Join the Facebook community. It's it's just incredible. You know, we comment on there as well as, you know, our, our tribe of amazing customers that we've had over the years. So um, moving on for the next uh, several minutes, I would love uh, to bring up some frequently asked questions that um, various members of our uh, clinical nutrition team here will answer. So uh, let's go ahead with the first one, Lisa. All right, how does Viome compare to other tests? I get that one all the time. Hey, Grant, you wanna take that one? Absolutely, I'll take it. It's something we uh, absolutely like to talk about. We want you to know what sets Viome apart. Um, we know you have lots of options. Um, really, we feel we're the most comprehensive, easy to use and uh, affordable tests uh, on the market. I wanna give you some details uh, as to why. Uh, first, affordability. Um, uh, you start at $99 for gut intelligence right now, $179 for health intelligence. Uh, that health intelligence is going to include, of course, the, the gut intelligence within it, plus you're going to get uh, mitochondrial scores, uh, cellular immune system scores, uh, biological age, and so much more. Um, any one of those tests, let's start with the GI test, for example. Um, uh, you're looking at you know, two to $500 for a decent GI test on the market. Um, we're giving you that um, uh, plus a biological age. If you're going to do biological age on its own, you're looking at another $100 to $500. A lot of companies that, that uh, are competitors, I guess I'll say, um, they offer these standalone tests that you have to purchase individually. Viome includes it all in one. Uh, glycemic response, another example um, that Guru mentioned, uh, it's incorporated into our test. Um, you're getting all this and it's a tremendous value, especially when you consider uh, the nutritional recommendations that we're giving that are personalized to you, delivered straight to your app. Uh, that takes me to, to ease, easy to use. Um, uh, you order the kit, we send it to your home. It's a simple at home stool collection and, and blood test. If you're not comfortable pricking your finger, a lot of people aren't, you could have a, a loved one do it for you. Um, really test uh, your, your, your trust uh, relationship right there. Um, once you collect your samples, uh, you drop it in the mail. There's no need to worry about refrigeration or storage. 
Um, you get that in the mail, it gets delivered to our lab. And, and we're really proud. We've really gotten our turnaround time on those specimens down to 10 days. Uh, so by the time the, the lab receives your specimen, they process it, analyze it, um, and kick out those uh, results and recommendations to you. Uh, we're looking at an average of 10 days, really remarkable um, what we've been able to do. Um, a world-class lab and the folks uh, there at the lab are just uh, amazing people. Um, our test is comprehensive, right? So not only are we looking at the microbiome, but we're also looking at uh, host cell activity. Um, that's giving us perspective on, on both sides of the two, both in, uh, in the digestive tract um, and beyond. Um, and we're looking at RNA, right? So a lot of tests, those GI tests I was talking about, for example, um, they only look at DNA. DNA has a role, it's, it, it, it has its place, but it's not really the best. And, and the analogy I like to use is like, hey, say you're gonna go to a movie, uh, DNA really just gives you the, the cast of characters, right? You can see the actors' names, uh, their character names, but it doesn't tell you like who are the who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, uh, what are they doing? What's what's the plot line? Is it is it an action film? Is it a drama? You don't really know. RNA gives you all of that and more. Um, we're really the world's leading expert in in RNA analysis. We have the world's largest RNA database. Um, something we're really uh, proud of. Uh, we we analyze hundreds of pathways and uh, microbiome taxa. Um, it, it's, it, it's really an amazing technology. Um, and that's what uh, allows us uh, to provide the precision, right? So we have our precision and our personalization. A lot of other companies, uh, they really rely on questionnaires alone to maybe uh, spit out some, uh, some, some supplement recommendations um, while we have uh, a questionnaire, but we, we still have this technology. We can really look on the molecular level, look at that gene expression and that pathway activity that we keep talking about um, that helps us give those those really um, high quality food and supplement recommendations, unlike anything uh, anyone's ever been able to do before. Our testing is dynamic. Um, so that RNA I was talking about, DNA is very static, um, really can't tell you if you're healthy or unhealthy. It doesn't change over time, really can't tell you if you're alive or dead. Um, RNA can. Um, it can really tell us how your, uh, how your genes and your body is responding to your lifestyle and your diet. Um, but other than that, it's, uh, we're constantly improving, right? We have this flywheel effect and we're really proud of this because every time you test, every time your, your, your family, your friends, they test, they're making the product better. Um, we collect that, uh, that data, we analyze it and we put everything we learned right back into the product. So every time you test, you're benefiting your neighbors. Um, every time they test, uh, they're benefiting you. It's really a beautiful thing. Um, and that's really it. Uh, again, we, we know you have lots of options, um, but we really feel like we're providing the, the most value and, and the best science to, uh, uh, it's delivered straight to your home or straight to your phone, uh, you know, really so we can get you this high quality information for you to make uh, your own decisions uh, to help support you, your health, and really help you live your, your best life. And, and that's what it's all about. That's what we're all about. Um, hope that helps. Amazing, thank you, Grant. Next question, please. All right. What is your view of plant-based milks? I know they are incredibly popular these days. Um, let's see. Hillary, I'm picking you. You want to take this one? Sure. Yeah, I've got this. Yeah, so the, the question even says they all seem to be pretty processed. So would you advise adding them, avoiding them too? Um, it's true. They, If you're buying them at the store, they're all fairly processed, right? And, and Biome recommends that you're eating foods that are minimally processed if possible. So if you can, I would recommend making your own plant milks. It's probably easier than you think. Uh, but if you don't have time to make your own plant milks, you wanna buy them at the store, you don't need to avoid them completely. Uh, just follow these five recommendations for picking out your plant milks. So number one, check where that plant falls on your biome food list. We do currently have some plant milks on our food list. We have almond milk, soy milk, and rice milk. So if those are avoid, then of course you should avoid them. But if there's a plant milk that you'd like to drink that isn't one of those three, check where that plant falls on your biome food list. If it's an avoid, you should probably pick another milk. Um, the only exception I would make to that rule is, is if, the plant is avoid due to phytic acid. Like I mentioned before, soaking the milks um, degrades the phytic acid. So if that's your avoid, I would say it's okay to, to drink that type of plant milk. Um, look for unsweetened varieties. Plant milks are all often 
contain a lot of added sugars. So these would be on the label as something like cane sugar, sucrose, fructose, glucose, dextrose, lactose, or maltose, any of those oses uh, you want to avoid. Also added oils, thickening or stabilizing agents. So uh, most thickening or stabilizing agents you want to avoid, but I think guar gum is okay. It's, it's a prebiotic fiber that feeds butyrate bacteria in your gut. You might even recognize it, some of you, from your pre and probiotic stick backs. Uh, and then lastly, avoid acid regulators. So these will be on the label as phosphates, so like sodium phosphate or calcium phosphate. These are all going to be disrupted to your microbiome. So I would say you don't need to avoid plant based milks entirely. Just make sure you're choosing a plant-based milk that's clean and that aligns with your Viome food list. Amazing. Lisa, next question, please. All right. Why do plant viruses matter? And this is my favorite one of all. Do I have to avoid my avoid food forever? Hillary, you're on a roll. Go for it. Sure. Okay. Uh, I think I have some good news for you guys here. You don't have to avoid the food forever, but uh, let me back up a little bit and explain why. So Plant, based, plant viruses are exactly what they sound. They're viruses that infect plants. The research on them is still developing, but what we do know is that an increased abundance of them in the microbiome has been linked to some negative health effects. So for example, the most common plant virus that we see is the pepper mild model virus. This is a, a virus that infects peppers. Uh, it's so common that it's actually been used to detect fecal contamination in waterways. Um, it's very hardy. It's found in foods that have been dried, cooked, and sterilized. So even cooking food isn't going to destroy the virus. And it has been shown to uh, elicit an immune response in humans when they have it in their gut. And uh, its presence has been correlated with some symptoms like abdominal discomfort and skin irritation. So just this one virus alone, we know has some negative health effects. Um, in general, we also know that plant viruses can cross the gut lining. And we also know that when we've detected a high amount of viral sequences in the microbiome, our preliminary research has shown that this is associated with potential inflammation. So just taking all of that in, into consideration, um, should you avoid the foods and you have to avoid it forever? Well, Biome recommends that you just temporarily avoid the food. So about three to four weeks is pretty reasonable. And this is so that you can identify whether the food that has this virus has been contributing to any symptoms that you've been experiencing. After about three to four weeks, you can reintroduce that food back into your diet and then monitor the re recurrence of any symptoms. And if it's, I would say if you have more than one plant virus that you'll wanna reintroduce them back one at a time so you can see what foods that um, those symptoms are coming from. So good news, you don't have to avoid them forever, just temporarily. Great, thank you so much. Lisa, let's go to the last question, please, uh, in the essence of uh, making sure everybody's time is considered here. Next one. Okay, now this is the one, this is it. The most important question of the day. It's gonna change everybody's life. Janelle, I'm gonna put all the pressure on you. Oh my How goodness. How do I know if this diet is working? Please, okay, this me. is this is the most important. First of all, it's not easy to change your nutrition and what you're eating. And you're all here and invested in it. And we know that it's hard to avoid certain foods. So I'm sure you're thinking like, will this work for me? Um, we at Viome, we're doing studies. We have studies that show improvement of those who follow their Viome recommendations. And so it's important to have that clinical evidence, right? And we have that here up on the screen. Um, we've looked at populations with IBS, depression, and diabetes, and we look at symptom severity um, before and after following their Viome recommendations. And we've seen really great improvement. I mean, 38% reduce severity in IBS, 36% reduce severity in depression, and 30% reduce risk of diabetes. Um, if you are someone who suffers from a condition like that, you know that those numbers are huge. 
Um, we're continuing to do more studies. We have a bunch more coming up in the new year. We're excited about them. We're excited to share that with all of you as well. Um, but I would say e even maybe more important on a personal level is to pay attention to how it's working for you. Um, notice as you're changing what you're eating, um, you know, are you having improvement in things like uh, maybe less bloating, more energy, um, less joint stiffness, uh, better focus, better mental acuity, right? All of these things can be signs that uh, you're changing your gut environment and that your nutrition plan is working well for you. Um, so follow your plan, take note of those, those improvements and keep moving forward. Love it. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, that brings today's webinar to a close to the hundreds of people that joined us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for being our customers. You have no idea. You're moving humanity forward with us. Follow us on social media. Take advantage of our keyword signal at checkout to get up to 70% site-wide. Our next webinar in the series where we talk all about supplements is on January 6th, same time as today, same date as today. And uh, just wanted to say thank you so much on behalf of all of us. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you in January. Take care. And remember, there is an opportunity here to make illness optional. Join us. We're on that path. Take care, everybody.